Hey garden friends, welcome back. Today we are going to be filming a seed haul. I cannot tell you how excited I am to do this video. <laughs> Look at all of these seeds. Oh my goodness. Okay, so before you guys start yelling at me because I don't even have any beds really made yet um, in our new garden and I literally ordered like half of the seed market. But before you guys yell at me, I actually didn't order all of these seeds. Well, I did, but I didn't. Okay, so here's the story. So for Christmas, my husband gave me some seed money. So of course, you know that the next day I was online shopping for seeds, trying to figure out where I got the best bang for my buck. So I literally was just trying to figure out where it was gonna be the best place for me to order seeds. Um, that was pretty affordable and I found that Hertz Garden was doing a sale and so I was able to order pretty much almost like 60 packs of seeds. It was a lot of seeds. That's a complete lie. It was 23 packs of seeds. It was at least, it was at least 40. Nope, still 23. I don't know. Somewhere around there. <laughs> I, I, I blacked out at a certain point. I wasn't sure how much I bought, okay? I just, I bought a lot. And I did this order and I waited a couple of weeks and nothing. I, I got my confirmation and everything, but, and it said that it had shipped the day after my order. So I did the order on December 26th and then the day after it was supposedly have shipped December 27th. But obviously we know, you know, that the mail like system was completely backed up there for a little while just because of so many people ordering things for Christmas and stuff like that. So I didn't think much of it, but then when week three hit, I started to get a little impatient. So I went ahead and emailed the guy at Hertz Gardens and just asked, hey, like what's the status of my order? It says that it's shipped, I haven't received it yet. You know, should I be worried kind of thing. And <laughs> the next thing that I knew, the guy was ordering me back saying that he had refunded me for my order. So I thought that because I had received the refund that they had completely like nixed my order that maybe it hadn't gotten sent out or something along those lines. But literally like a week later, all of my seeds came in, which is amazing. So I literally just got this huge order of seeds completely for free. So shout out to Hertz Gardens for like amazing customer service. I will definitely be ordering from them again. The guy was super chill and um, obviously refunded me even though he knew my order had been sent out. So that was super awesome. But obviously after he emailed me and said he canceled my order, I was like, no, I need these seeds. Like I need seeds. Like. I want seeds for my growing year and everything. So I went ahead and jumped on and went to Flora Farms and I haven't ordered from them. I know everybody in their like brother has been ordering from them, but I had found them like a couple of years ago before they had even kind of become like big, I guess. I mean, I don't know. I hadn't heard of them from other YouTubers at this point. I just found them kind of like on a whim and just their aesthetic, their whole, like all the different varieties that they have, I fell in love. And even though it was definitely more expensive and I didn't get nearly as many seeds, I went ahead and put an order with Floret Farms. And then on top of that, since I knew I wasn't gonna get as many seeds from Floret, I went out to my local Lowe's and bought more seeds. And then, and then I got my seed order in from Hertz Gardens. So I have a couple of doubles of things, but not too many. Many, um, because I wasn't sure like obviously the stuff I could find at Lowe's wasn't the stuff that I was ordering online so I was kind of just finding like trying to find comparable things so anyway either way I have a lot of seeds to share with you guys I'm not even 100% sure I'm going to be able to plant all of these this year but I'm going to do my darndest to try I have grand plans my husband thinks that I'm crazy but I am going to be trying to actually get some soil delivered and because um, I'm doing like no dig gardening beds and to do no dig you have to have soil which I don't have so I'm going to try to do that in bulk this year so I'm pricing that out if it ends up being too pricey I might just till the ground I haven't quite decided how I'm gonna do it yet but either way I'm gonna find some space for these seeds and I'm gonna get them in the ground if it kills me <laughs> okay so on to the seed haul after that very long intro so with the seeds I'm going to split this up into three categories I'm going to split it up into hardy annuals um regular annuals that you would just plant like normal and then into perennials so I have three different categories for you guys and I'll go ahead and put timestamps up on those I'm going to try to be succinct about the different types of plants that I'm going to be showing you guys but 
we all know that I'm a little bit wordy, so <laughs> hopefully I will be able to kind of keep this a fairly short video because I only have like 30 minutes to film this video anyways, so we're gonna see how that goes. But let's go ahead and get into hardy annuals. So hardy annuals are like cold weather annuals, so they're annuals that you can plant either, if I'm understanding correctly, either in the fall or you can plant them still pretty much in the dead of winter. Pretty much as long as your ground is still workable, you can direct sow them. Now they will come up as soon as their time is right, but it just means that the seeds themselves are like resilient to cold so they're so nothing's gonna get killed or anything like that um for them to be in cold ground so first right out of the gate i have quite a few varieties of sweet peas i have some from floret and then i have some from botanical interests um, these I got a couple at my local garden center and then i also did receive these my navy ones i'll go ahead and throw up a picture on the screen too of like like a picture of the actual flower which are these beautiful like blue bluish purple sweet pea blooms I think that they're just absolutely gorgeous um, all of these seem to be about the same size they say that they can be anywhere from six to eight feet vines so I guess it just depends on how big like your trellises and how tall they're gonna be but I got some my navy I'm totally in love um, I got some high scent, which are just these beautiful pinky purple tinge. I just thought, oh my gosh, I, you really cannot beat botanical interest packaging. I am a little bit of a sucker for packaging and it's just gorgeous. Their illustrations are just to die for. So honestly, I fell in love with this as soon as I saw it and was like, I just, I have to have it. I've never grown sweet peas before. So if you guys have any tips for that, actually a lot of the stuff that I have here in seed form, I have never grown before. So <laughs> this is going to be a bit of a experiment, but a lot of the things that I chose, I had heard from other people that they're fairly easy to grow direct seeding and they're fairly easy to grow in general. So I'm hoping that that is the case with sweet peas. Yeah. So I got the high scent and then I also got little sweetheart which I just thought would be really sweet to go in some containers as well and then I also got these two varieties from Floret and the first one is Oban Bay which is like this beautiful baby blue almost periwinkle colored sweet pea oh my gosh I'm not kidding you guys this is the color that I had my daughter's room in our old house and I'm just I'm in love with it it literally is the most romantic color that I've ever like I've ever seen. And then I also got Castle Wellian. I think that's how you say it, Castle Wellian. And this one is just a beautiful, it's like a rose kind of peachy pink color. It just seems like the perfect, I don't, I don't even know how to explain it. It just, the ruffles in these particular sweet peas and like seeing them bunch together, it just makes me feel like a fairy princess. So I am so excited to grow sweet peas for the first time this year. So hopefully these will turn out the way that I want them to. <laughs> Next, I got two varieties of calendula. And the first one that I got is Bronze Beauty by Floret Farms. And this is just literally the most beautiful bronze. It's I don't even know if bronze is the right word because it's also kind of mixed with this maroon. It looks very like antique old timey. It literally is the epitome of fall to me. So I'm so excited to have it in my garden. I think that it's going to turn out beautiful. The next one that I have is Zoo Lights and that looks like this. So it's like peachy with like red and yellow center and it looks almost like, it almost looks like a sunrise. That's what it reminds me of. It gives me very like sunrisey vibes. I'm also really excited to grow calendula though because I've heard that it's a great plant to help keep aphids off of your other plants or like other pests or certain pests are attracted to them. I believe it was Garden Answer had said it in one of her tours. So that's why I've been looking for it and why I made sure to order some this year. But now I'm like so in love with how they look that I'm kind of like, no, those pests can't get on them now. The next party annual that I have is these pansies. Got the blues. I've never grown pansies before. I've only ever, literally ever in my life bought them from like the home improvement store or from like a garden center. But I just saw this and I just felt like they were just so pretty. I was like, why not? I'm trying to grow other things, so hopefully they will do fairly well. Apparently it does, this does say perennial. So I don't know if these are like true perennials. They're only so like sold as annuals in my area. So I don't know if that's like 
a misnomer or if maybe that's just how they're typically used, but I don't know. I mean, these are so pretty. I honestly might just leave them wherever they decide to be. That, I think that they could turn out to be really pretty border plants. What I got is I got a poppy bread seed type of poppy. It's Hungarian blue and this is what it looks like. Gorgeous. And apparently the seed pods on this thing get huge and are really good for floral arrangements. So even after you lose the flower, the seed pods are actually what a lot of people use for decorating. So I was really excited about this because I saw a lot of people using poppy seed pods in their fall arrangements. Honestly, I'm not going to pay like four dollars for you know four stems of them from the craft store so why not grow them and i mean can you get over just how romantic that blue tinged foliage and the the purple i can't i can't get over it this other one that i got i've never even heard of this before until this year but this is called orlea white lace and apparently this is a really easy hardy annual to grow. It does get about 30 inches tall at its tallest. So that's kind of nice because I feel like a lot of the wildflower kind of things tend to be a little bit taller, like three and four feet. So it'll be nice to have something that will kind of be a little bit lower. So it kind of creates a little bit of dimension because I do have a lot of like wildflower-esque kind of things. A lot of them are really tall, so it's going to be hard to see everything. So this will be good to break that up a little bit. Next, I have two types of bachelor but bachelor's buttons, if I can say that right. Um, I just have a stereotypical blue boy bachelor's button. This I actually got, I actually got this last year, so I'm not sure what the uh, germination rate is gonna be like on this guy, but I am gonna use him because I do think I have the space for it now, and I'm gonna try, because I do love these. I think they're so pretty. The next one I got, though, is Black Magic, and this one I'm really excited about because I am kind of a little bit of a sucker for this like deep, almost black purple. I think it goes really well with like a light blue. And then it also, I think goes really well with um, like a peachy pink. Chef's kiss. Next I have two types of Larkspur. Um, the first one I have is Shades of Blue Larkspur. And I love Larkspur. I think it is so pretty. But this one, I just think that they're so pretty and fluttery. And I just feel like them moving in the breeze is gonna be just perfect. Um, the next one I have is from Floret Farms and it's the Smoky Eyes Larkspur. <laughs> this, you guys, it's like a gray blue. I, I can't, honestly, I have never seen a flower like this. I've never seen a flower look that moody. I, I just, I, I'm honestly going to be so upset when I cut these and bring them inside and they die, it's just, it's gonna be devastating. So I'm really hoping I can get these to Germany and like I can direct sow them repeatedly throughout the year because I want these constantly in my house. I, I don't want anything else. Okay, I take that back. There's a lot of things I want, but I really want these because I just think they're just so beautiful. Next, I have two varieties of Love in a Mist. And the first one is uh, the Jekyll and Hyde blend. Oh, I'm sorry. I wanted to say Jekyll and Hyde because it's Miss Jekyll blend is what it's called and it's just blue and then uh, like a periwinkle light blue and it looks like you could also get white in there as well and then the next one I have is chocolate and cream once again I mean this one is even almost cooler than the bachelor's button black magic because it has that dark purple in the center but it's surrounded by white so it's like perfect because it has like that very contrasting like structure i'm super excited about that next another one that i hadn't heard of until literally this year and that's cress i have green dragon the green dragon variety and i saw this on florent farms and this was not something i was planning on buying but i saw it and just i first off i knew i was buying a lot of flowers um, and I just wanted something that would be a good filler for some bouquets and stuff like that. Um, Cause you'll notice I'm getting a lot of like cut, stereotypical cut flowers. So I do wanna try to bring some more bouquets inside um, because that was something I really enjoyed this past gardening year was trying to build bouquets. I'm not very good at it, so I didn't film any of it, but anyway, so that's why I got some crests. <laughs> Next, I got two types of straw flower. I decided to get straw flower because last year when everybody was using straw flower in their autumn arrangements, I was like, I need that. And you like you can preserve them. And I just think that that's really, really cool. So I'm very excited to grow these. I have just this kind, it's called the Giant Swiss Blend. And it's just like a stereotypical um, mixture of colors, which I'm not a huge fan of, but 
This was the first thing I bought these actually on clearance last year. I bought these on sale and I just saw straw flower and was like, I'm going to get them. But then the other kind of straw flower, straw flower that I'm really excited about is silvery rose. Oh my gosh, you guys, this, this straw flower, it gets me, man. It's so gorgeous. I'm looking at a picture of it right now. It's so gorgeous. It is like, it's a mixture of like white tinged with pink with yellow centers. Mm, I just, I can't get enough of it. I'm so excited that I will be able to dry these. I'm very excited to use these in my daughter's room on top of her bookcase. I feel like that would just go super well in like a little kid's room. You, you guys will have to let me know, have you guys used straw flowers before and how long do they last? Next, nothing super fancy, but I just have a marigold white, oh, Kilimanjaro white. I wanted to say white swan for some reason. I like to use them in my garden. I feel like they help to drive away pests. I don't know if that's an old wives tale or not. Next, I from Fairy Morse, I just got some snapdragons. This was just at my local garden center and I just picked these up because I wanted some snapdragons and I thought I would grow them. And I liked the variety of colors. Um, I just said I don't like highlighter yellow and this definitely has some highlighter yellow in it, but I don't mind it if it's mixed in with the pinks, so. Okay, this next one is a bit of a gamble. I got Bells of Ireland. I actually got two sets of seeds because I ordered one from Hertz and it came in this thing. And then I got one from Florette Farms. So I know that a lot of people have said that this is a little bit tougher to grow. So we're gonna see how this goes, but a lot of people say just to direct seed, sow it. So I feel like you can't go wrong with that as long as I can get some good soil in the ground. Um, as long as I can do some good soil amendments, I feel like it's gonna be okay. And I know that they had mentioned with Bells of Ireland to um, put them in the freezer for a couple weeks, like two weeks before you sow them. And supposedly that's supposed to help with the germination rate. So we'll see how it goes. I'll keep you guys updated. Okay, so moving on to my regular annuals. I'm gonna try to roll through these pretty fast because this is already taking a little bit longer than I anticipated, but that's okay because hardy annuals are my favorites. <laughs> I think I'm mostly excited about those, but let's go ahead and get into regular annuals. Okay, so I've got several different types of asters, um, China asters, and then I also have, um, actually I don't know if this is a Chinese aster. This one might be a different one, but I have this aster that's a Tower Shamoy, I think is how it's pronounced, and it's just this beautiful peachy color. And I like anything with a high petal count, y'all. Anything with a high petal count I can get down with. So I'm really excited about that one. I also have this just assortment that I got on clearance at a garden center last year, and it's just a Frego mixed, and it's got purple, pink, and white. So, I don't know. I'm not like hardcore for it, but you know, I got them on clearance, so I might as well put them in the ground, see how it goes. And then I also got, um, this one I got is a Bengal Rose Frost Aster, and this one has very like spindly petals, like they're very thin and long just a gorgeous, gorgeous variety. So I'm very excited about this guy. And I think these together, that would be gorgeous. Next I have four varieties of zinnias. So the first one I have is Ben from Florida Farms, um, Benari's, what is it? Benar, Benari's Giant Salmon Rose. And um, this one is just a really pretty stereotypical peach, zinnia and like i said i'm a sucker for anything with high petal count so i love this one and i think it's going to be a great cut flower the next one i literally got this i literally got this because of the name you guys i'm just such a sucker for this stuff um this one's called zinderella lilac this is just so cute um but i will say that this is a really unique looking zinnia and i'm super excited to have something that's not so i don't want to say stereotypical i'm i'm not hating on zinnias at all but i just love that this it almost reminds me of um certain types of echinacea certain types of echinacea kind of look like this too where they have a little bit of that cone at the top and then they get like the petals are short at the top and then they get longer as they go down so super excited to grow this one and then i also just have two kind of fairly regular ones, um, a Zinnia Purple Giant from Botanical Interests, and then from Fairy Morse, just a Giant Double Enchantress, which is just a pink. So all of these are kind of in the pink and peach family, and I just feel like they're gonna complement each other really well. So you guys know what I'm about to say, I'm excited. <laughs> 
Okay, next I have three types of Cosmos. The first one I have is a Seashells blend, um, which I just ordered because the, the petals look so cool. They're like these cones almost, like each petal is a cone, and they look like little seashells. Um, but they're just a mixture of like a dark pink, uh, medium pink, light pink, and white. So I think these are just gonna be very beautiful. Like I said, I'm just a, I'm just a sucker for fluttery, like, flowy things. <laughs> um, the next one I got, <laughs> I keep laughing at myself because I'm trying to, I told you guys, I'm like, no, I'm not into highlighter yellow. And then like two things have been highlighter yellow, but this is um, a Xanthos, yeah, Xanthos Cosmo. And these are really, really pretty too. So yeah, I don't know. To me, this is like more of a buttercream yellow. I'm gonna say it's a buttercream yellow. That'll make me feel better. Um, the next one is a double click blend from Botanical Interests. And it's kind of that same, um, it looks to me as the pretty much the same type of coloring that I had in the seashells blend, um, but it's just a little bit fuller. They have a little bit higher of a petal count. So I'm excited about that. Okay, next I have two different varieties of sunflowers. I do plan on, I also wanna get teddy bear sunflowers. If you guys know, I'm pretty sure that's the variety, but it's the ones that are really fuzzy. So I am gonna pick those up, but I don't have those yet. Um, I have Lemon Queen, which is just your very stereotypical sunflower. And then I also have Moulin Rouge, which is just a dark, uh, beautiful red. And I will be sewing these a little bit later in the season so I can have them for the fall. Cause I just think, this maroon color is gorgeous. Okay, next I only have one variety of poppy other than the Hungarian blue poppy. Um, and this one is a thigh, uh, I'm sorry, a thigh. A Thai silk pink champagne, oh, it's a handful or a mouthful, poppy. And it is so pretty, oh my gosh. In the picture, it literally looks like pink champagne. Like it, it's the named perfectly because it is literally like pink champagne. It's like this antique uh, with like this pink center. It's like a almost like an antique ivory pink. I'm pumped. I'm honestly just pumped a lot about Floret Farms varieties because they're just so gorgeous. So I'm really excited about that. Um, I also got a creme brulee phlox, which is along the same lines as the uh, Thai silk pink champagne. Oh, can't say it. It has a very like beautiful antique look. It has like a maroon kind of speckled appearance, um, like in the center. Definitely check out Floret Farms. If you guys haven't gone on there yet, you should go. Next, I have a cup and saucer vine, and it just is purple. <laughs> It's just a purple cup and saucer vine. I just got this because I just thought it was really pretty and different and I hadn't grown this before. So I thought I would go ahead and try it out. And I have a lot of fence that can be covered because it's super ugly. It's just chain link fence around our house. So why not add a different type of vine? Speaking of, I also have morning glory chocolate. And this one is one that you do need to wait until it's warmer to plant and don't plant it too early because it will grow um, like massive. So the first year that I gardened, I planted just regular from like Fairy Morris, just the regular blue morning glory. And it, the plant, I planted it as soon as the ground pretty much could be, as soon as I was like super close to my last frost and I planted it too soon. It got so overgrown with its foliage and there wasn't, really blooms for the longest time. It was just leaves. So definitely don't plant it too early because it's just gonna get too much um, and don't over fertilize it. That's what I read <laughs> that I did wrong. Next, I have some Pixie Delight Lupines. Um, these I'm excited to put into some of the more shady parts of my garden. A lot of the stuff that I chose is a, has, is a little bit more shady tolerant. Not some of these annuals, but the perennials, I definitely have a lot that are more shade tolerant because I'm gonna try to fill in some of the more shady parts. Next, I have Corn Cockle um, Ocean Pearls. Oh my gosh. I literally, I, <laughs> I order things because of the names. I really do. This reminds me of a mermaid. It's an ocean pearl, so therefore it is a mermaid flower and I had to have it. But besides that, it did just look really, really pretty. It has a very flowy, um, I don't even know how to describe it, but it's it's just very textured and they have these, it had pretty big petals for that. It was just a really gorgeous plant. I'm hoping it's not too hard to grow. 
because I'm very excited about it. It reminds me of, I grew flax last year, unknowingly because it was mixed into a like seed mixture, but it reminds me of that, except that flax was very small, whereas this one's, all, the petals and the flowers themselves are a bit larger. Next, I have Amai Dara. I think it's Amai or Ami um, Dara, and this reminds me of Queen Anne's Lace, but it's not the same thing, but that's what it looks like to me. It just looks like Queen Anne's Lace, but purple. And this one apparently is really, really pretty for flower arrangements, um, really good for withstanding that stuff and super easy to grow. So I, I found this one, where did I order this one? Yeah, I think this came with Hertz Gardens and I saw it and was like, I need that just because I love the texture. I love the look of it. Okay, we're making it you guys, we're making it. So next I'm finally moving on to perennials. Here we go, okay. let's. Let's power through, let's power through. So the first one I have is Delphinium Emerald Pacific Mix. So just a really easy, like um, I guess stereotypical Delphinium. So I haven't had the greatest luck with growing Delphiniums. I actually even got the, if you remember, I got some blue mirror Delphiniums in a haul, a clearance haul from Lowe's last year, and I killed them. <laughs> I think I think it's because I, I planted them on the south side of my garden and I don't think they got enough water. And I think that they ended up being in too like clay dense of soil. So I'm gonna try to amend the soil a little bit better and plant them in a little bit better of a space that is more like, um, just has better soil. The next one I have is a Delphinium Magic Fountains Mixed Color Dwarf. That's what it looks like. And this one's just a little smaller. It's pretty much the same like uh, types of colors, but it, it's just a little bit smaller. So I just wanted something to be able to kind of like be a step down, be like a stepping stone plant. So next I have Hyssop, Lavender Hyssop. This one, I just love the upright texture. I feel like it's gonna be a really good um, complement to some of the other more open blooms that I have. This one can be grown in full sun as well. So it's really flexible uh, and yeah, Apparently it's an attractor to butterflies too. So, you know, I love that. Next I have Rocky Mountain Blue Penstemon. Super excited to grow this. Um, everybody talks about Penstemon and I feel like I'm behind the times. I haven't had Penstemon before, but apparently it's a really good and hardy perennial. So I'm excited to try to grow this. Next I have Salvia Blue Victory. This one is a annual Salvia. Um, it says, well, it says perennial, which is why it's in this stack but it's as tender grown as an annual. So I'm assuming it's not an annual or it's not a perennial in my area. So actually it probably shouldn't have been in this stack, but oh well. So it's Blue Victory. I had really good luck with Salvia last year. It was one of my ride or die plants. I loved it. It was super easy to care for. So I had to pick up some type of Salvia again this year. I do wish that I had picked up a perennial Salvia though. So we'll see how it goes. Next, I just have some Verbena. Um, this one is Brazilian Vervain it looks like and it looks like it's kind of like a pink purple really really pretty i like the little tufts at the top verbena is also another one that i had really good luck with it just kept blooming and blooming with pretty much no real attention so yeah i think this one's a good one now this one is a biennial but it still lasts throughout the like years so i could count it as a perennial but i got some foxglove um once again haven't had grown any fo foxglove before but hopefully these will turn out okay the only thing i did find out after <laughs> buying this is that they are severely poisonous <laughs> so if you have a dog and a kid like me maybe just make sure that they're kind of tucked back in the garden where you know that they're not going to be like trampsing through i i doubt that my kid would ever eat something like this but yeah, apparently foxglove is poisonous, so just keep that in mind. <laughs> Next, I have two different types of columbine. I have one that is Rocky Mountain Blue, once again, so same kind of premise as the Penstemon. And then I also have another one that's Barlow's Double Mix Color, and I just like the way that they look. I thought they were really pretty. I have grown this when I was a kid. We had columbine, and it was super easy. I'm pretty sure my dad just scattered the seeds, and they just popped up, and they kept coming back year after year. Really, really pretty blooms. I also got some Canterbury Bells. I feel like I'm really, like, killing this color scheme. <laughs> I'm pretty much getting, like, purple, pink, white, and blue, <laughs> and that's pretty much it, but what can I say? That's just the kind of stuff that I like. So hopefully it's not gonna be too overwhelming, but I'll know for next year. Maybe I need to mix it up with some more like yellows and some other something else. I also got Scabiosa Pin Cushion Flower Isaac House Blend. Um, I mean, 
Do I need to say more? Look how pretty it is. It's just so pretty. I love this type, like I love pink cushion flowers and they're so expensive when you buy them from the garden center. I almost bought one last year, but it was like $12 for like an eight inch pot or something. I don't even think it was eight inch. I think it was like four inch something. They were so expensive. So I'm gonna try to grow my own. Hopefully I don't kill all of this stuff. Next, I got some echinacea, another really good one that is really don't even need to say anything about it. It's just a really hardy perennial. So I'm very excited to get this one in because it caused me literally no issues last year. The, I will say actually, I did say that, but I had some, um, some leaf modeling going on with one of my echinacea, but either way, it still bloomed and it still did fine. It seemed fairly healthy. So I'm not gonna complain. Um, I also got these drumstick flowers just because I thought they were really cool looking and I've seen them before, but I haven't grown them. So we'll see how this goes. I don't know, they remind me of lollipops. <laughs> I also got some yarrow. This um, can get started inside now. I remember this one has, has a long growing time. Yeah, eight to 10 weeks. So I need to get this one started <laughs> inside. So some border plants. Next, I have three different types of border plants. I'm just gonna include them all together because this is starting to get long. Um, I've got Primrose um, Showy Evening. It's just this beautiful, really sweet ballerina pink with a yellow center flower. Very excited about that. Some Forget-Me-Nots, can't go wrong. And then some Blue Bell Flowers. All right, guys, that is it for my flower seed haul. I have a lot of vegetables as well, but I decided not to include them because it was already long enough. So if you guys are interested in a vegetable seed haul, let me know and I will definitely do one of those um, here in the next couple of weeks. Let me know what you guys have picked up and what you've had success growing from seed and if you have any tips for any of the plants that I mentioned in here. Otherwise, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.